Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Let's begin lecture 31. and we will continue on kinetics of corrosion. So, we have seen I 0 on metal surface for this. So, like that we have I 0 for everything, every reaction reaction and that time we have to mention the metal surface, because that reaction is taking place on the metal surface. So, now let us look at this from this uh, classical rate theory. So, this classical rate theory says that there would be jump of metal atom from one surface to another and this is a thermally activated process. So, that is what it has to have a barrier which is called as activation barrier and then once it crosses that barrier it goes to the other surface and this barrier height decides the rate at which this metal would go from one surface to another. When we dip a metal in a solution aqua solution, this is metal, the metal ion forms. Metal ion forms. Now, these metal ions would keep forming, but at the same time, when it release to the solution, it will leave negative charges on the metal surface. So, you are having a situation, this is metal surface, metal ions would go to the solution or instead of m n plus, let us put in the form of positive charge. So, we have positive charge formation. positive charge formation and then we have to maintain the neutrality. So, the negative charges will be left to the metal surface and these two would try to balance each other. Now, when this forms, then of course, the reverse reaction also forms. Now, after some time they reach equilibrium, or reversible. Or I would say that it establishes I 0 and then because of this electrostatic interactions of positive and negative charges, they would form a kind of surface on metal surface as well as on the solution surface very close vicinity to the metal surface and that time we have two boundaries and that boundaries or two surfaces, this is one surface and this is another surface. These two surfaces will be in close vicinity and they will try to cancel out the charge, they would try to balance the charges each other 
and these two layers are called electric double layer. Electric double layer and this was the very first concept of electric double layer and it is termed as Helmholtz double layer. And the inside part is called IHP and out one, outer one is called OHP and then IHP is nothing but inner double layer, inner Helmholtz plane. and OHP outer Helmholtz Helmholtz plane. And when this double layer forms, it is associated with a capacitor capacitance and since they are charged surfaces we have a potential difference creation and these potential difference is nothing but the electrode potential. Or the potential on that metal surface for that reduction reaction. Now, these two planes this is a very primitive consider, uh, concept of electric double layer and then later on this has been modified. And now, when this metal ions forms they get solv solvated, because water is a polar molecule and because of that polar molecule presence this positive charge is solvated by water molecule. And on the metal surface, since there are negative charges, the water molecule would get attracted depending on what charges are there on the metal surface. If it is negative charge, in the case what we have considered here, the water molecule will be distributed like this. Sorry, this is plus this is plus and this side would be negative negative charges. So, like this this rearrangement of water molecules take place takes place. Now, the center of this particular water molecules which are close proximity to the charged metal surface and the center of this positive ion solvated may solvated ions positive ions close vicinity to the water molecules which are arranged close to the charged metal surface that becomes my OHP and this is my IHP. And because of this situation, the double layer, this is becoming my double layer, and that also leads to a potential difference, and also finally, it would lead to electrode potential. But this is a advanced level of consideration of the surface. We would stay on this preliminary consideration of double layer, which is Helmholtz double layer where we do not consider this solvation as well as uh, water molecule polar or, or molecules distributing close to the charged metal surface depending on the charge of the metal surface. And if it is for example, if it is positive charge then this becomes. So, this water molecule would be like this instead of uh, positive charge is close to the metal surface negative side of the polar molecule would be close vicinity would be directing towards the metal surface. So, now if we consider this particular situation, 
we can constitute like this. This is I H P and this is O H P and this is metal and this is N plus or we can call it as reductant or we can call it as red and this is nothing but oxidant or ox. So, m n plus plus n e equal to m or ox plus n e equal to red and when this metal goes to metal ion or metal ion goes to metal they would not go straight away like this. Since, it is a thermally activated process they will go over a energy barrier and this they are on the same value if we consider g free energy with distance. So, they will be on the same plane when i equal to i 0. Why? Because if I consider the rate forward rate and backward rate. So, let us say this is my forward and this is my backward. So, rate r in terms of if we consider rate or we simply say r forward equal to we can consider it to be same as r backward and when this situation arrives it reaches equilibrium or it calls it we can call it as r 0. And rate of if we consider rate in terms of moles per unit area per unit time. So, this would be equal to I divided by N f we have already seen this particular formula. So, this turns out to be I forward is nothing but I c backward is nothing but I a I c divided by n f equal to I a divided by n f equal to I 0 n f. So, then it turns out to be I c equal to I a equal to I 0. So, that means, the rate at which forward reaction reaction happens the similar rate the backward reaction also happens. Now, if this is this barrier is nothing but delta g star and if we consider n 1 or n prime or I would say n 1 let us put it as capital n 1 in order to differentiate between this n and this n this is n 1, this is n 2, this n 1 and n 2, n 1 is number of moles per unit area on metal surface or rather I H P and n 2 is equal to number of moles per unit area on O H P that means, the center of the metal line align in front of the metal surface. F 1 is nothing but or the fraction N 1 goes to O H P from I H P. So, this is nothing but oxidation 
f 2 is the fraction of n 2 goes to i h p from o h p and nu 1 is vibrational frequency of metal atom and mu 2 is vibrational frequency of metal ion, then we can write this r forward equal to n 1 nu 1 f 1 exponential minus delta g star by r t y. So, this is as per classical rate theory and then multiplication of these quantities, this is basically this entire equation indicates the rate of metal number of moles. of metal atom, metal going to ion formation and this is basically a thermally activated process. It indicates that metal atom should jump over this barrier and then should go to the OHP. Similarly, the backward reaction R B would be n 2 nu 2 f 2 exponential minus delta g star by R t. Now, if I consider that whatever metal atom goes to the, the metal ion surface, everything gets it gets absorbed there or the metal ions which are getting reduced, they all will deposit on the metal surface. So, then f 1 equal to f 2 equal to 1. So, since this is a fraction, so this becomes 1, because whatever metal ions are forming, they are going to the O H P or whatever metal ions are reducing, they are going on to the I H P. Now, new 1 equal to nu 2 is of the order of 10 to the power 13 per second and n 1 and n 2 what we have decided let us say n 1 equal to n 2 equal to n which is number of moles of metal ions or either the metal atom metal those are converting to either metal or metal ions. So, that means for both the situation going to m n plus or m n plus going to m both the cases this becomes similar number because we have assumed that whatever metal ions are forming they are getting absorbed on the metal ion surface which is OHP or whatever metal ions are reducing they are also becoming part of IHP. So, then I can write R f equal to R b equal to n f nu exponential minus delta g star r t. Now, we know from the previous discussion as we have seen here, we can use this equation. So, we know r f equal to r b equal to r 0 equal to i 0 by n f. Now, since we are considering that they are they are jumping over the same barrier, this is same, this all factors are same that is what they can be equated. So, this equal to I 0 by n f. So, I 0 equal to I 0 by n f. So, I 0 becomes 
n f n f nu exponential minus delta g star by r t and here f is considered as 1. So, I can remove this f. So, it becomes n f n nu. This is an important derivation, because this will be used up when we talk about polarization. So, we have an expression of I 0 with reference to the activation barrier which is delta G star. Now, we have already termed another and you see this is also becoming moles, this is current density, our current density we can relate it to corrosion rate or deposition rate. So, this is not same as corrosion rate, but it can be related to. Now, we have used one term called polarization. So, when we talk about polarization, it means that it is a shift from the stable value. Now, we see that when m n plus plus n e m, this is reaching equilibrium. So, we have a potential, which is of course, giving a situation of I 0, which is exchange current density. And if we have maintained standard value, it would be E 0. So, that means, activity of m n plus equal to 1, temperature equal to 25 degree Celsius and pressure equal to 1 atmosphere pressure. So, then it becomes E 0, E 0. So, if if this equilibrium is disturbed and how can we disturb? This is I C, this is I A with a negative sign. Let us say I supply little extra negative current. This negative means we are supplying little extra cathodic current, which is opposite to the anodic current. So, then this reaction would happen at higher rate. So, if it happens at a higher rate, that means this reduction process happens at a higher rate in order to maintain that reduction current density. It means that the electrode potential would switch to the negative side. So, why negative side? Because when it switches to the negative side, this metal surface is becoming more and more negative, and that is why the electron supply of electron to this reduction process would become easy. So, then it potential becomes let us say E 1. Now, the polarization would be this is called polarized electrode and that time the value of the polarization would be E 0, because now we have switched from E 0 to E 1. This is also negative since the potential goes to the negative side and this is the value of polarization or we call it neta C. C is nothing but the cathodic. Similarly, if we supply anodic current, then the potential this anodic reduction anodic process will be at higher rate. The way we have discussed here, the electrode potential would increase 
from the standard value or the equilibrium value and we also call it as polarized electrode and that time if the potential goes to E 2. So, E 2 minus E 0 is the positive quantity since the potential has moved on the positive side because we are actually taking this redux oxidation process at a much higher rate. So, this becomes the value of polarization and when we have seen when we see that the potential increases from the reduction potential at that equilibrium condition we call it anodic polarization and when it it is termed as nita a and when we have this situation we call it cathodic polarization and potential drops from the equilibrium value and the entire this polarized situation arrives because of polarization and this n c or n a they are the measure of polarization or or we call it over voltage and this unit is nothing but in volt. So, from this particular information or the discussion what we see that the polarization happens because of the supply of extra current either in the positive side or negative side or either extra cathodic current or ex extra anodic current and if we send extra cathodic current the potential drops from the equilibrium potential which is E 0 here and when we send extra positive current or we call it anodic current then the potential increases from the equilibrium potential which is E 0 here also and the difference in that potential we call it the measure of potential and in this case it is cathodic potential cathodic over polarization in this case it is anodic polarization and now in the next lecture we would get into this polarization part and then try to see the relation between this over voltage and current density. Let us stop here, thank you.